All right, I am live today to bring you a Tundrable 4 report slash review. Yesterday was in Green Bay, Wisconsin for Tundrable 4. And I thought I could do a video where I give my feedback on the tournament on how I did. So it's the first time I'm doing a video like this. I thought I could just, you know, shoot it with my iPhone and uh, upload it, but apparently I left my charger in the car that my wife took this morning, so I'm doing it as a live stream. So let's talk about Tundra Bowl 4. It was my first time in Green Bay. Tundra Bowl champ, the Tundra Bowl champ is not me. The chat box is open, so since this is a live stream, I will comment on some of the messages in the stream, but the champion was a guy named Regulator, and boy did he regulate, but I'll get to that in a little bit. So, it was my first time in Green Bay. Um, we drove up there, been to Milwaukee before, knew what to expect driving through there. So, we get to Green Bay. And we're driving through and we're kind of like, where is the city? Because all we see is Lambeau Field. All we could see is the stadium. And then, you know, I, I immediately understood why Packers fans are so passionate. That's because, you know, that's it's pretty much one of the biggest things up there. So, uh, so yeah, that was pretty cool. So, we got to the uh, the watering hole it's 10 a.m. because that's when the registration started and uh, the parking lot was packed and we're like is there really this many people here for the Tech Mobile attorney we knew that there was at least 50 people registered um, but we didn't think that there should be that many cars for that many people. But the watering hole is like a big, it's a big, uh, it's a big bar with a lot going on in it. So I went, came to Tundra Bowl with my cousin Sean, who played in the tournament also, and I'll talk a little bit about how he did. And I also brought my brother along with me, Matt, and he was there to try to do some live streams on the channel. Didn't work out too well. I'll talk about that in a little bit. And I also brought my friend Mike. He just wanted to come, have a few drinks, have a good time. And he did that. So, uh, we get out of the car. We, we experimented with the Nintendo in the car. We played some games on the way up there. Didn't work out too well. The TV was a little bit too big for the car. It was kind of hard to keep it steady. Well, we did play a few games on the way up there. Um, I got a 9-inch Zenith coming from eBay, so hopefully that will fit better in the car that I have. So we walk in the wrong door at the watering hole because it is there's a lot going on in there. There's a lot of different doors. And uh, we walk in, and it's, it's jumping and jiving at 10 a.m., there's all these volleyball, sand volleyball courts. There's people dressed up in costumes. There's like, I don't know if it's a DJ, but someone's playing music in there. And, yeah, they're wearing all these different costumes and stuff. And we're like, wow, this is this is how they get down in Green Bay. This is pretty cool. So I I, I came with my uh, my Bears custom customized jersey on with my last name on it. And uh, I didn't hear this, but my cousin Sean heard it. So we got a warm welcome walking in the wrong door in volleyball, sand volleyball costume land. Because someone was like, who are these douchebags? And then he's like, duh bears. So he was obviously joking, but <laughs> it was pretty funny. Um, you know, we don't give the Packers, a hard, Packers fans a hard time in Chicago unless they're our friends because there's people from all over the place in Chicago there's different types of bars for uh, all different types of teams professional and college so we got in there Tundra Bowl um, run by Nathan and I think we there was about 58 participants so the the tournament for the Tundra Bowl 
was upstairs in uh I guess you would call it like a party room. And they had their own bartender. She was wearing a Mortal Kombat shirt, kinda kinda with the retro theme, so that was pretty cool. They were serving up some 250 16 ounce hams, which was a little bit dangerous for me. They had their 250 spotted cows. And that's like a big craft drink, craft beer drink in Wisconsin. It's pretty good beer. It was in the can. And then they had two other bottled beers that, that were $2. One of them was like a root beer. And the other one, I don't even know. So they had some, some deals just for the Tecmo players upstairs on the beers. So that's good and dangerous, you know, if you're trying to do well in the tournament. But uh, anyways, you got a t-shirt with the entry. T-shirt looks like it's pretty good quality. We'll find out because I'm washing it right now. We'll see if that one lasts. Because I know that uh, the Tecmo Madison 12, I think that one was, what, the Hoss Whisperer? That shirt was one wash and gone. It can't wear it anymore. It's got a hole in the armpit. I don't know if that happened in the second wear or what, what was the deal. But the Tecmo Madison 6 shirt, I still have intact, still wear that one sometimes, so... I don't know. These t-shirts, you never know what quality you're going to get out of them. So you got that. You had the uh, TVs lined up. Um, some of them were against the window, which was viewing a road and just some, some trees and snow and stuff. And it was, uh, it, was, it was cold by the window, for sure. And they had all these heating vents, and, and it seems like they were turning it on and off. But, um, I met there, the two guys that were doing the, sh the commentating for the stream, Ben and Ryan, those guys are pretty cool. They definitely put a lot of time, effort, and thought into Tecmo Super Bowl, and they did a good job commentating because the reason I know this is because, you know, I walked over there a few times to see what they were doing. Also, there was a stream on Twitch that uh, they were commentating on. All right, so going into the rest of, the, of my tournament report, I'm just going to play right now. I'm going to put a computer versus computer game on. Super Bowl preview of the Patriots and the Falcons for this year, even though in Tecmo Super Bowl it's a clunker. So we'll just let that play out as I talk about the rest of my review and report. So... Uh, the cool thing was, not only did you get the shirt, but you got a Pacific football card pack from 1991, and, uh, I got a really good pack, to be honest. So, I look, I took, if you take a look at the pack I got, I kind of made, like, a quarterback and five skill players out of what I got. So, the first one that, uh, my quarterback is none other than Green Bay's hometown Don Mikowski, the Magic Man. So he would be the quarterback on my little Pacific Card skill player fantasy team. And look at this running back lineup. Bo Jackson, Emmett Smith. So you got the fastest running back in Tecmo Super Bowl and the leading rusher with the yards of all time in one pack and then you can't and then my receivers are good too we got Stefan Page best receiver on the Chiefs in Tecmo Super Bowl and then Mark Clayton debatably the best receiver on the Dolphins with Super Duper and then to round it off a star tight end Brent Jones from the San Francisco 49ers so that was a good pack nothing really else in the pack worth talking about but that was pretty cool good nostalgia factor with those I was more of a baseball card foot or a baseball basketball card collector got a ton of Kobe Bryant rookie cards but after the 90s I kind of got out of it but it's still cool nostalgia factor good job uh, good idea Nathan that w that was pretty awesome um, so they also had a raffle there uh, I didn't buy into it. Uh, they were giving away some things like Super Bowl pennants. They also gave away 
just for uh, registering in the tournament early, a Roger Craig signed autograph San Francisco 49ers helmet. So that was cool. Uh, so let's talk about the tournament a little bit. So they tried to make the groups uh, before the tournament started, but of course they were expecting some walk-ins. I don't think they got as many as they thought they were going to get, because at one point the email said that they had 53 uh, registered participants, and they ended up with 58. So the, the pool that I was supposed to be in, I didn't end up in that pool, because there were five players in it. Um, and I was a, the two seed in that pool, so I ended up in a in a pool with only four players, and there was two out of twelve pools like this. Now, there's really not much you could do when this happens because it's gonna be it's not gonna be equal any way you look at it because you're you're guaranteeing four games for pool play, so. For those two pools, what they originally decided to do was have the first seed play the second seed twice, and the third seed play the fourth seed twice. Now, I challenged uh, Nathan on this because I thought about it for like a couple minutes, and I'm like, wait, so I'm a two seed, so I have to play the first seed twice, and then the third seed gets to play the fourth seed twice, so really the third seed would have the advantage. Now. The seeding, I mean, it's hard to do the seeding when you have this many players. You try to get, you try to get some research on them with past tournaments and also, uh, you know, playing online. So, you know, I trust that they they did the best they could with the seeding. So, you know, I just thought it was unfair that the second seed would have to play the first seed twice because you're essentially saying they're expected to go two and two. And then the third seed is expected at that point to go, well, I guess they're expected to go two and two as well because they, you're saying that they're probably going to lose to the second seed. Anyway, they changed it and I give them credit for that. Um, so they made it, the first seed had to play the fourth seed twice in my pool and the second seed had to play a third seed twice. So that was for the other pool that was like that as well. Now... Thinking about that too, it's not really fair for the four seed to have to play the first seed twice if he is a true four seed. Now, I don't know if, you know, our pool was a couple walk ins or not because everybody in my pool could play. Um, and that leads me to my first matchup. I played the fourth seed, Kramer. Um, and he could play based on the other games that I saw him play. Not the one versus me didn't go his way. Uh, he picked a matchup that I was thinking about on the car ride up there, which was Eagles-Rams, so I was fully prepared for it. I was really thinking about picking this matchup, which I did later in the tournament. And uh, the reason I wanted to pick this match was because the Eagles' secondary is terrible, and the Rams have a good quarterback and good receivers. So you're taking calculated risks downfield and they're not they're not as risky because Henry Ellard and Flipper Anderson throwing up bombs at those guys on the Eagles secondary that's just smart Tecmo play I mean because their secondary is not very good and uh, the idea behind it is Randall QB Eagles you know he's usually gonna have the best options he is the ultimate weapon in the game but there's not much reason to run with the Eagles, unless your running backs go into a lot better condition because their offensive line sucks. So in that matchup, it really worked out for me. It started off, you know, back and forth. The the first half, you know, it was seven seven at first, and then uh, he actually stopped me within the ten yard line on fourth down, and then the the very next play against Kramer. I was able to, uh, I got a called play sack fumble for a touchdown. So that was demoralizing for him. After that, he didn't really recover. You know, he, he threw a couple picks. I was able to capitalize on, on those. 
I at least had two big cover catches in the game to, I believe it was, they were both to Henry Allard, but like I said, the Eagles, that's one of those sneaky matchups, and that's a matchup that I would, you know, you just get comfortable with the teams, you can pick that matchup, and uh, so, yeah, I came away with the win in that one, the final was 35-7, to seven. you know, if you get a few breaks, a fumble, if you're able to pick off a ball or two, that's going to be, it's going to be huge, so... Started off 1-0. Uh, my next matchup was against the three seed, Kramer. No, not Kramer, sorry. Carl. Um, if you don't know who Carl is, he said he played like 10 years ago online on Nesticle. Um These days he's kind of looking like Doc Mac from Back to the Future. Um, but, you know, you could tell he was a, he was a calculated player. And versus me, he got to call the matchup. He called Patriots Seahawks. And it's a clunker matchup. You don't know which way it's going to go. And when I played him, I got the ball first, had a good drive down the field. Felt like I was going to score. You know, he was giving me a ton of props. Like, wow, you must be skilled. You just beat the Eagles with the Rams 35 to 7. So the first drive, I threw a pick on the shotgun play that I like, the shotgun pass for, and yeah, so that didn't work out too well. Um, you know, the thing is, Dave Craig, he has a good pass control, but his pass speed's so slow, so he was able to pick it off with Lippet. I thought I had enough time to sneak it in there, but you know, when you're used to faster passing speeds, I just I took, a kick, I took a risk, and uh, he picked it off. So, first drive, don't score. Um, he does end up scoring, I forgot exactly how he scored the first touchdown, I think he did have one good drive for sure. Um, my next drive down the field, uh, so he had really good red zone defense because there was another possession where he stopped me on fourth down within, within the 20 yard line and so we still got a 7 nothing score at halftime. I end up getting a field goal. He gets the ball back, so it's 7-3. So I'm obviously having trouble with the Seahawks getting any... I'm driving down the field, but I'm just having trouble punching it in. So 7-3, he punts the ball. I force a punt. And that's where things get... Um, things get bad for me. Punt, fumble, I can't get out of bounds. I'm trying to run straight out, but just can't do it. Um, so... Punt returner fumbles the ball. He gets the ball next play or two. He throws a JJ to Marv Cook, and there we go. 14 to 3. Seahawks, you know, now I have to start throwing up JJs. And that, that ended up being the final score 14 to 3. Um, but I have no one to blame but myself in that match because I, I, I drove the ball down the field, just couldn't punch it in the red zone. So. Then, uh, after that, played uh, the first seat in my pool, a guy named Josh, goes by the name Coconuts. Now, Josh was definitely the best player in the pool, so they did a good job on the seating. I got to call the matchup. I called Dolphins Redskins. Um, I kind of called the matchup to try to bait him into the Redskins. I feel like a lot of people like to use the Redskins because they have... They have a passing game and a running game, whereas the Dolphins don't have that that uh, that running game. But I love using the Dolphins, so I try to bait my opponent into using the matchup, and uh, he did not bite. He went with the Dolphins. Uh, I don't know if, if you ever played him. He's very good. He's a good tapper, too. He's tapping like crazy on the controller the whole time. So, you know, you know right off the bat, if you're not uh, a really good tapper, you're probably going to lose in those situations. Uh, you know, I'm not that good with the Redskins, and I kind of knew that when I picked the matchup, so that was an error on my part. I didn't really get anything going. I had a couple chances to throw bombs downfield where, you know, Rippin just wasn't on. He's either on or off. With that 44 pass control, it can go either way in the matchup. There was a few, you know, jumping catches that I could have had, but 
they were over the receiver's head. So I didn't even score in that match. It was 20-0. Uh, you know, at this point, I drank, I drank way too many hams. I was probably like four deep. So, you know, drinking in Tecmo Bowl, I want to have a good time. But when I do it... My processing is slower, and I'm not as good as a Tech Mobile player, so I have to find out how to balance that in the future. So I went down to one and two after losing to him, and then uh, I got to play Carl again, Doc Mac, um, and I really wanted to play him again because I knew I was better than him, and that's the matchup I let go. So. I ended up playing him again. He got to pick the matchup. He didn't pick his crappy of a matchup this time. He picked Cardinals Cowboys. I took the Cowboys, of course. They have the advantage in that matchup. And the thing about Carl, he was like the one guy in my pool that he was reading my mind pretty well, especially on uh, called plays because he was blitzing in. There was at least two series in this game where he called all three plays and I had to punt. Um, but I ended up winning this game 14-7. to He never really got anything going on offense besides one drive where he did score a touchdown. I only managed 14 points. With the Cowboys, I should have been able to at least punch in 28. But he, he did have some good defense, and uh, he was able to slow me down. Uh, should have scored more, but... So that put me at 2-2, two and two, and since we're only in a 4 team pool, I think that worked to my advantage because Kramer had to play uh, Coconuts twice and he actually gave him the best game both times and Kramer also smashed uh, the guy Carl that I, I lost to the one game and beat the other game. He beat him like 45 to 7 so he could definitely play and it was just unfortunate in our pool, that the seeding was like that. Um, but, you know, I'm not blaming Nathan or anyone who went into uh, picking the seeding for the tournament. Because it, it's really hard to do. But, you know, if you... You know, if Carl play, or Kramer plays next year or in, a, in another tournament, uh, I'm vouching for him. He can play the game. He just was put in an unfortunate situation. Um, he went one and three. Carl went one and three. Uh, Josh won all the games. He was four and zero, oh. and then I was two and two. So went into the double elimination tournament, and uh, before I talk about that. The reason that I thought it was unfortunate for our pool specifically is because I was following what my cousin Sean was doing in his pool. So he had Mort in his pool, and that was the only person that he lost to. And Sean's a good player, don't get me wrong. I usually can beat Sean most of the time. Um, so he just picked a 49ers Oilers matchup versus Mort because he knew that he was probably better than him. He tried to make it a shootout, but it didn't work out. But everyone else in his pool, I mean, he was he was crushing them. And I saw his pool going into the tournament. Uh, and, you know, they had three guys that didn't have... I guess the only way I could tell, they didn't have techmobile.org accounts. So, don't know how active they were. But he was able to, you know, take care of business in his pool. He went 3-1. and one. Um, And here you have it. Look, Falcons... Falcons beats the Patriots 21 to 7. We'll see if that happens next Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday. All right. So that's that. So I still got some more stuff to talk about. Don't want to go over don't want to go over 40 minutes in this uh, review. So yeah, it's tough to do the seeding. I know we saw some matchups. Uh, someone pointed out to me. I think it was Ben and uh, the, one of the guys that was doing the commentating, he's like, look at this screen. It was 49ers-Cowboys. So someone picked that matchup. I don't know if there are other matchups like that. But if if you don't know the, the ratings of the players and, and what teams are good, you know, obviously 49ers-Cowboys are going to take the 49ers every time. 
That's why sometimes you defer because you just don't know what matchup your opponent's going to pick. So, yeah, that leads me on to the double elimination tournament. So there was some downtime in between uh, the pool play and the double elimination tournament. For me, it was like, it felt like at least an hour and a half, which a little longer than I like, but I understand you got to wait till the finish, till they finish up everything. You got to do the seeding for the double elimination tournament. I actually wasn't sure if I was going to get in, but I think the way they did it is the first two places in each pool got in. So I was second in my pool, so I did get in with that. Um, but by this time, I had quite a few hams. <laughs> I was getting tired because I woke up early and, and you know, plan on making this a one-day trip. So my focus was pretty much shot at this point. Um, was a little disappointed that I even lost a match to Carl in pool play, but it happened. So... Went into the double elimination tournament. I played Lewis, Mort's brother. He picked a crap matchup that I hate, Jets, Saints. I went with the Jets just because, you know, I have a little bit more familiarity with them. They got a little bit better quarterback. Uh, you know, the, the matchup with him, it was pretty good. The score didn't say how close it would have been, but I had made a couple mistakes. He got picks with the Saints. You don't you don't expect the Saints to get too many picks on balls you may not have thrown or shouldn't have thrown, but it happened. He ended up winning twenty one to three. So I'm like, okay, you know, I know he's the one seed in the tournament. I I could have put up a better game. I I'm not. I don't have good focus at this point. So I'm like, I could probably beat my next opponent. So what happened is I ended up playing a guy that I wanted to meet for quite a while is Flo because what I've heard is he's the best player in Chicago. And, you know, I I saw the end of his last of his of his matchup which he lost in overtime. It was 10-10. It was Cardinals versus Cowboys. And he was the Cardinals. He had the ball, and there was a called play, sack, fumble. And the the guy he was playing took it back to the house. He lost the game. And so I knew he was a good player. Update roster. No, I'm not updating any roster right now. I'm just talking about the Tundra Bowl 4 tournament that I played in yesterday in Green Bay, Wisconsin. So I knew going into that next match when I got matched up versus him, I'm like, oh, so I didn't I didn't get an an easier matchup like I thought I was gonna get. So I ended up playing him. Glad I finally got to meet him. I got to call the matchup and I went back to a matchup that I was thinking about calling earlier in the tournament. Eagles, Rams I knew my focus was pretty much shot at this point. So I'm like, you know, I'm pretty sure he'll pick the Eagles and I'll just test my luck with uh with the Rams, see if I could get some deep balls. And uh you know, just try to slow him down with Randall, make him methodically go up the field. And my the only thing I regret about the game I played versus him is the first drive I got the ball and I didn't take any shots down the field. Uh, he actually said before the game, he's like, no pressure or anything, but if I lose that game, I'm probably going to go to the bathroom and kill myself. <laughs> so, you know, obviously he was down about the way he lost his last game. And uh, I don't know if him saying that held me back from throwing a bomb with the Rams, but it could have been a spirit crusher if I just threw up a, a bomb to Flipper Anderson or Henry Ellard. But I didn't do it. He stopped me on the first drive. I tried to play it conservatively. And, uh, you know, he scored a touchdown first drive, 7-0. Seven, seven I came back, scored a field goal, 7-3. Then before the half, he got in another touchdown, 14 to three, and I had I had a chance to get the ball back and throw up one last hail mary, 
And I did that, and I caught it with Flipper Anderson at about the 30-yard line. He blitzed, so his player was way down the field. But coming out of the catch, J.J., there were two Eagles uh, defensive backs back there, and their secondary sucks. But right right as I came out of the J.J. break, one of the drone defenders got me. So if he didn't get me, I would have scored a touchdown. Made it 14-10 to 10 going in the half, but it didn't happen that way. He got the ball at the half. I wasn't able to stop him. I didn't get any breaks, no fumbles, no picks. Couldn't force a turnover. That's usually what I try to do. and Well, that's my plan in that matchup. If he makes a mistake or two because he's slowly going up the field, then I could capitalize with a quick strike. So pretty much in the second half, we we went back and forth and with touchdowns. Um, I didn't actually break through in my passing game. I did take my shots down the field the rest of the game. I just couldn't get anything besides that one, uh, that one JJ at the end of the half. And so what happened is uh, I, I was able to break through a little bit with the running game, had over 100 yards with Cleveland Gary, but lost the game 28-17. So went out with a few scores, got to meet a player from Chicago, so that's pretty cool. Um, you know, the, the cool thing about the Tecmo community is – you know, he bought me a shot. Thanks, Flo. I appreciate that. Um, I don't know if I should have done a shot before I got on the road, but <laughs> I did it anyways. Shot of whiskey. So I was eliminated from the tournament. Two and four. My final thoughts on it are I didn't play up to my potential, uh, and that, that was the most aggravating part for me. I lost the game I shouldn't have lost in my pool play. And then I lost focus. I had too many beers. Um, didn't really give a good matchup to Lewis. And I, I kind of redeemed myself a little bit versus Flo, but it really wasn't a close game because the first half didn't, didn't go my way. So overall, it's a disappointing tournament. I got in the top 28 of the, the tournament. But uh, it didn't work out. Cousin Sean also got in. I'll just talk about a little bit about his last matchup. He, uh, he lost his first round. Didn't get to see the game. We were playing at the same time. But I did get to see his, his next game. He played Redskins. And um, who the heck was he facing? Lions, maybe? I don't remember who exact. Oh, it was Vikings-Redskins. And um, he had his opportunities in the game. He had a drive at the end, 14 to 10. He was down. He should have put him away earlier, but he, he was throwing some picks with Rippin. And, you know, he crossed the line of scrimmage. He had a guy open on the curl route at the bottom. It was Ricky Sanders. He would have had a chance to punch it in. It didn't work out. So we both got eliminated. And that was that. Now, overall, the tournament... We had a good time. Nathan throws a great tournament up there. Uh, the watering hole is a pretty cool place. It's nice that they had some specials for us. Uh, I would play in it again, although I don't know if I could make it a one-day trip from Chicago. You know, six hours on the road, three, three there, three back. You know, I want to have a good time, but I don't want to drink and play in the tournament. That's always the dilemma at the Tech One tournaments. I get there, you know, everyone's wearing their old school NFL jerseys. I'm like, oh yeah, let's have some beers. And then it kind of affects my play in the tournament. And I got to find a way to balance that out. So if I do this tournament again in the future, it'll probably be um, a hotel kind of thing. So I can either have a good time the night before or, you know, have a good time after the tournament's over. And, you know, take go go to the hotel after that. So we'll see how it goes. So they also streamed on Twitch, like I said. That was pretty cool. Uh, like it's Ben and Ryan, they were doing the commentating, do, doing a great job with that. They were having some issues with the Twitch stream. And, you know, it was going on and off in some of the key games at the end, which kind of sucked. But they were on public Wi-Fi at the watering hole. It's a huge establishment, and it is what it is. So, 
you know, we missed some of the games, but it was clear to me who the two best players were after watching some of those games on the stream. Because you had, uh, let's see, the stream the game between Regulator and his brother, and, uh, you know, he crushed them with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the the Bengals. He called that matchup. That's not a matchup most people would call, but I didn't doubt him. I just wanted to see how it was done, and, and boy, boy, did he show me how it's done. Wins the game. I think it was like 28-7, to 7, so... You know, he had an easy time with him. And then they also streamed the Browns-Packers matchup with Mort and his brother. And Mort took care of business in that game. At one point, it was 35 nothing. I, I think it, it ended 35-7. to But it was clear that in those brothers' matchup, who the better brother was in those matchups. And if they're playing that late in the tournament, they're obviously all good. But you could see, you know, the in crushing defeat, what those guys are capable of. Um... It's always good, too, to see Retro Nathan in there in the Final Four. So, obviously, he's a good player. I, didn't, I don't know if they, if they did stream his game. It was going down during that. The stream was going down during that. So, kudos to him being fourth place in the tournament. Never saw him play Tecmo Super Bowl before, but obviously, he's pretty good. So, he got a fourth place finish. And the best game on stream that I saw... Uh, the the guy regulator. He's they're saying that he's probably the best Tecmo Super Bowl player in the world. But he ended up playing Mort, and Mort had to beat him twice to win. They played an Eagles Bears matchup, and that was a really good game. To be honest, they were back and forth. Um, it came down to a drive at the end, twenty one fourteen. Um, regulator was up, and he and then uh, Mort was driving down the field. And the last play came down to a, a J.J. throw in the end zone. It was defended well. You know, the Bears passing game sucks. You can't really expect too much out of it. And it worked out for regulator. And he was the undefeated, tundrable four, Tecmo Super Bowl champion. They interviewed him after the game. I think he won 600 bucks a trip to Madison, travel stipend, Pretty sure if this guy's played in other tournaments, he may, uh, may already qualify for the tournament. But um, so that the prize is pretty good, you know, if you if you can win first. But you could see that these two players versus everyone else, they were on another level more in regulator. Um, I think everyone else in the tournament was, you know, the they they were beatable. But these two guys, I don't know who beat Mort in the the double elimination tournament. Someone someone beat him one game. But they they were the best players. I mean we got we got the best two teams at the end, the best two players. And uh it was a good matchup. It was a good tournament. And uh yeah that pretty much wraps it up. Um Tundrable four good tournament ran by Nathan. Really enjoyed my time. Uh would play in the tournament again and, uh, you know, I look forward to see what he does with the stats and stuff on his website. Also, you know, what versus what Tecmo Madison does. So, Nathan, thanks for throwing the tournament. Uh, everyone that I met and played, you guys were cool. Um, but, yeah, had a good time yesterday in Green Bay. And that's going to wrap it up for this stream. So, uh, if you see this later... Let me know what you think of the tournament report review. And if you like them, I'll do more in the future. So I appreciate it. And take care.